Okay. Okay, so the square root of x and x to the one half is the same thing. So whatever number is right here in this index, that's going to be the denominator of our fraction with our rational exponents. Okay? So when you see a rational exponent, that's what these are called, a rational exponent, you are going to be taking a root of that number. You're going to be taking a root of that number. Now grab your calculator. Grab your calculator. Okay? So a couple of different ways that we can do this right here. What 81 to 1 fourth means, what it means is the fourth root of 81. That's what that means. Okay? They're, they're equal. 81 to the 1 fourth is the same thing as the fourth root of 81. Now we talked about these in class on Thursday, and we talked about how to do these on our calculator. So the way that you do these on your calculator is you're going to hit the 4 first. And the 4 comes from this root right here. Okay? Then you are going to hit the second button on your calculator. And then you're going to hit the caret top on your calculator. And then we are going to put the 81 inside that. Okay? So this notation right here on your calculator is telling us to take the fourth root of 81. It's telling us to do this right here. Okay? And what do you get? What is the fourth root of 81? Three. three. Now, I want to show you another way on your calculator to do it. Okay? I want you to put 81 in parentheses. Okay? Put 81 in parentheses on your calculator. Then you are going to hit the caret top. And in parentheses you are going to put one fourth. It's got to be in parentheses. So you're going to do 81 carat top and in parentheses, one divided by four. And what did you get? Three. Three, okay? So this is two different ways that you can solve this on your calculator. And this is with our roots. So we would rewrite this as a root. Here, what we've done is we've used a rational exponent. If you don't have the parentheses around this 1 divided by 4, then what you're telling your calculator to do is to raise 81 to the first power, then divide that quantity by 4, and you get a different answer. Okay? So you want to, be, uh, you want to make sure you've got those parentheses where you need those parentheses. Okay, 64 to the one-third power, what does it mean? Tell me what it means first. How can I rewrite this as a radical? Three to the, uh, yeah, three square root 64. Good, okay. Three is our index. It's what's going to be our root, okay? And then we're going to have our radical sign, and we're going to have the 64 in it. And we read that as... Right here, we read this as 64 to the one-third power. Here, we read this as the cube root of 64. They mean exactly the same thing. I want you to do this way on your calculator. This way right here. Okay? Practice that on your calculator. What'd you get? Good. Okay. That's correct. Now, we do not know the value of x. We are going to assume it is a positive integer, okay? For just the parameters of this class, the scope of right here, we're going to assume this is a positive integer. So I can't solve this, but I can rewrite it. How would I rewrite that? Fourth root. Okay, so we would read that as the fourth root of x. The fourth root of x, good. And we can't simplify that any further. Can I go to the next page? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. There we go. Okay. Now, you have to be very careful here because you have to ask yourself what is being raised to this one-half power. Okay? Is the negative being raised to the one-half power? Yes. Okay? I've got a yes. Anybody say no? You say no? It is... When? Say that again. It's not in parentheses. It's not in parentheses, okay? So that 16 is the only thing that's being raised.
ways for that one half power. Now, you could put the, and I'm going to go ahead and rewrite it first. So I'm going to rewrite it as negative square root of 16. Okay, negative square root of 16. Now, if I put this in my calculator, I'm going to get an answer. Okay, so this is just negative the square root of 16. So my answer to this is going to be what? Negative 4. Now, what if I did this on my calculator? Negative 16 carrot top 1 divided by 2. What happens then if I put that in my calculator? What would you get? Did you put this in parentheses? No. Put that in parentheses. and then you did 1 divided by 2, then you would get negative 4, okay? Because here, we are telling our calculator to raise the negative and the 16 to the 1 half power. Here, we're telling our calculator only to raise the 16 to the 1 half power. And this right here is only the 16, okay? That's why it's our 16 inside of that square root symbol. The negative is not being raised to the power. Okay. Okay. Now we're going to talk a little bit about our product, no, our power rule. No, not our power rule. Yeah, our power rule. Okay. Who does this one fifth belong to? Correct. It belongs to everything. So this is 32 to the 1 fifth, and it's x to the 10th to the 1 fifth. Okay? So let's figure this out. Let's rewrite it. So I've got 32 to the 1 fifth power times x to the 10th to the 1 fifth power. Now this is a power to a power. A power to a power. What do I do with the exponents when it's a power to a power? Good, good. So I've got 32 to the 1 fifth times x to the 1 fifth. Okay, now on your calculator, go ahead and um, so at 10 over 5. What's 10 over 5? Two. Okay, so on your calculator, go ahead and do 32 to the one-fifth power on your calculator. That is also known as the fifth root of 32. It is. Good. So my final answer to this is going to be 2x squared. Okay. Okay, the last one is the same. We're going to have to say 16 to the one-third power. And then we're going to say x to the seventh to the one-third power. Okay. Um, 16. Yeah, but we don't want it a decimal. Oh, okay. So I got to think about that. Because that. I don't think I have the right answer here. I don't think I wrote down the right answer here. Okay, so now we've got 16 to the one third power times x 
to the 7 thirds. Okay? Now I need to go to another sheet because this is going to take a little bit more room. Okay? Can I go to the next page? I know. I'm going to write it on the next page. I, actually, I'll just write the whole thing on the next page. Okay, so I've got 16 x to the seventh, and all of this is raised to the one-third power. Okay, so that's going to be 16 to the one-third power, and then it's going to be x to the seven-thirds power. Okay, so the seven times one-third, that's where I get my seven-thirds from. Okay, I'm raising a power to a power, so that's where I get the seven-thirds from. Now, if I want to take the cubed root of 16, and then I am going to multiply that times the cubed root of x to the seventh. We need to write this out, because if you put this in your calculator, you're going to get a decimal. And we don't want it in a decimal approximation. We want exact answers. Okay? We want exact answers. So I've got to break 16 down. So this is like some of the stuff we did in 10.1. So I'm going to break 16 down. So I'm going to have the cubed root of 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. Okay, because 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 is 16. Then I'm going to take the cubed root, and I'm going to write out x to the 7th. I know you might not have to, but I'm going to write it out. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Okay? Okay. Now, if I've got three, because this number right here is three, if I've got three on the inside, I pull one out. So I've got two on the cubed root of two. Okay. Here, I've got a set of three, and then I've got another set of three. So that's x times x on the cubed root of x. And now I can write all this together. 2 times x squared. And then on the cubed root, I've got 2 and x left on the inside. Okay. So sometimes you want to write it all out. Write it all out and simplify. Okay. Okay. So now we're going to talk about what happens when the numerator is not 1. So we had been doing it to where this m value was 1. Okay. But now we're going to start having an exponent inside the parentheses. And this is what I want you to focus on right here. I want you to focus on this part right here. This is fine, and this is a true statement, but I want to focus on this right here. This is what this means. This is what this means right here. I've got a to the m over n. The m is always the power inside the radical. Okay? It's the power or the exponent inside radical, okay? Okay, so that's, that's it right there. The denominator is always the root on the outside. Numerator always goes on the inside. The root goes on the outside. Now, when A is a real number, you, you can do this right here. Okay? You don't, but this is what's important. So this means you can take the root of it first and then raise it to this power. It, and that's fine. And sometimes it's easier to do that because you avoid working with big numbers. But this is the important part right here. This right here is the important part. Okay. Okay. So let's talk about what this means. Let's talk about what this means. 
So that's what we want to focus on right there. Okay. So what this means is 4 to the 3 over 2. That means 4 raised to the third power inside the radical. Okay. And then the 2 is on the outside. Now, 2 is so common, it's square root, we don't have to write it. So square root of x with a 2 right there is the same thing as the square root of x. It's so common, we use square root so often, if there is no number right here, the 2 is assumed. The 2 is assumed right there. Okay? Now... What is being raised to the four-thirds power? What's being raised to the four-thirds power? Eight. Just eight. Good. The negative is not. So I'm going to have a negative on the outside. Okay. What is eight being raised to? Uh, the fourth power. Good. And what root are we taking? Three. Okay. Now... What you could do, this is one of those situations where it makes it simpler to take the root first, okay? But I want you to go ahead and put this in your calculator. Don't worry about the negative one. Just focus on this right here. So let's put that in our calculator. Um, you could also put eight to the four thirds in your calculator if you wanted to, okay? Um, so you would have three second carrot top and then I would put this in parentheses eight carrot top four and then hit enter and what did you get 16. it is 16 okay I'm sorry say that again oh we didn't finish that no it is not 16 I apologize um, four times four times four. What's four times four times four? 64. And what's the square root of 64? Eight. Eight. Okay. Now, for this one, so your answer to this, this part is 16, but don't forget you've got to multiply your negative one by it. So your answer here is negative 16. Now, a um, couple things I want to show you right here couple of things I want to show you. So I could rewrite this as negative 1 times the cubed root. Instead of multiplying 8 times 8 times 8 times 8, what I could do is write it out. I could write it out like this right here. Okay? Now, if I've got a set of 3 right here, what do I do? How many am I looking for on the inside? 3. Okay? So then I can bring that 8 out. So then I've got negative 1 times 8 on the cubed root of 8. What's the cubed root of 8? 2. two. So then I have negative 1 times 8 times 2. And what do I get? Negative 16. Okay, so there's a couple of different ways that you can figure those out. A couple of different ways. Okay, I'm going to write this one on the next page. So I have 3x plus 7 raised to the 7 over 3. Okay? Now, I want you to think about the cubed root of u to the 6th. The cubed root of u to the 6th. Okay? What do I need to divide this by? Because 3 goes into this 6 evenly. Okay, how many times does it go in there? 2. So this is u to the second. Okay, the cubed root of u to the sixth is u to the second. So what I want to do here, what this means is I am taking the cubed root 
of 3x plus 7 raised to what power? The 7th. Now, I want to write that as 3x plus 7 raised to the 6th power. And then how many do I have left? Good. And I'm going to put a 1 right there just so we can visualize what's happening. I've got 3x plus 7 to the second power. We're not going to multiply that out. And then I've got the cubed root of 3x plus 7. Okay? So that's really focusing on um, our definition of exponents. That is our final answer, yes. That is our final answer. Okay? Now, who remembers what negative exponents do? What happens when I have a negative exponent? So if I've got x to the negative 2, what does that mean? Good, 1 over x squared. 1 over x squared. Okay? So if I've got a negative rational exponent, that just means I move it to the denominator also. That's what that means. Okay? Okay, so here I've got 64 to the negative two-thirds power. That means 1 over 64 to the two-thirds power. If I wanted to write that as a root, I could. It's not necessary, but I could. So I've got 1 over the cubed root of 64 squared. Okay. Do 64 to 2 thirds in your calculator and let me know what you got, get. And we're just talking about the denominator. We're just talking about the denominator here. So don't put the 1 over it or you'll get a fraction. 16. Good. Good. Okay. Now I've got negative 16 to the negative 5 fourths. I like to leave that negative 1 in the numerator. Okay, I like to leave that in the numerator. Then I'm going to have 16 to the 5 fourths in the denominator. Okay, so what I want you to do is I want you to do 16 to the 5 fourths on your calculator. 16 to the 5 fourths. Okay, so you would do 16 carat top. 5 divided by 4. And what'd you get? 32. Okay. Now we're going to review all of our exponent rules. We're going to review all of our exponent rules from earlier in the semester. Okay. So here we go. When I multiply exponents together that have the same base, so a to the m times a to the n, this was back in our first unit, I add my exponents. Okay? A power raised to another power, that's when I multiply. Okay, if I have a quantity that's multiplied together or a quantity that's divided, raised to another power, that power belongs to everything in those parentheses. Okay. When I divide exponents, I subtract. Anything raised to a zero power is one. 
And a to the negative n is 1 over a to the n. Those are our exponent rules, okay? So be sure you are familiar with these. Be sure you're familiar with these. Okay. I know we're not writing these down. Is it okay to move to the next screen? So here I've got x to the 1 half times x to the 1 third. That is the same base. My base is x. So what am I going to do with that 1 half and 1 third? Good. Okay, so we're going to have 1 half plus 1 third. My LCD is 6. How many times does 2 go into 6? 3, and 3 times 1 is? Good. Okay. How many times does 3 go into 6? Twice, and 2 times 1 is? So then I've got 5 6. So my answer here is going to be x to the 5 6. Okay? When I divide, what do I do? Subtract those exponents. Okay? So I'm going to have 1 third minus 4 thirds. One-third minus four-thirds. What's one-third minus four-thirds? It's negative three over three, so that's going to be negative one. So that's y to the negative first power. Oh, no, it's seven. I'm sorry, seven. Seven to the negative first power. It is 1 over 7, and, that, and 1 over 7 is going to be our final answer right there. Okay. Now, for C, I'm going to go ahead and add these together. I could rewrite it if you wanted me to, but it's not necessary. I'm going to go ahead and add them together. Okay, so I've got negative 4 sevenths and 6 sevenths. So I've got negative 4 sevenths plus 6 sevenths. Now I am adding those together because right here I am multiplying. It's just that this happens to be negative. So negative 4 sevenths plus 6 sevenths, what does that give me? So the answer to this is going to be y to the 2 sevenths. Do you like this chapter better? Yes. Yeah. I hear you. I hear you. I hear you. Okay. Okay. Can I go to the next page? Okay. Okay. 32 to the 1 fifth times x to the 2 third, and all of that is raised to the third power. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do is we're going, well, there's actually a couple of things that we could do. This can actually be simplified, okay? 32 to the 1 -fifth power can be simplified. So that's one way that we could do it. What is 32 to the 1 -fifth power? Uh, two. Two, okay? So 32 to the 1 -fifth is the same thing as two. That is an option in solving this right here, Okay. Then I've got x to the 2 thirds raised to the third power. So then that's going to be x. Actually, I'm going to write that 2 thirds, and then all of this is raised to the third power. Okay? So what this means right now is the 2 has got to be raised to the third power. And then I've got 2 thirds times 3 over 1. What do I get then? 2. 2. So then I've got x squared, okay? Can 2 to the third power be simplified? 2 times 2 times 2. Eight. 8, and then I've got my x squared. So that's my final answer right there. 
Okay. Now, another way that you could do this, um, and either way is, is fine. You can do it either way. Okay. I've got 32 to the one fifth power. And then I multiply that times the three over one. So I've got this one fifth and I multiply it by this. Then I've got times x to the two thirds times three over one. Then I'm left with 32 to the three over five times x squared. Now on your calculator, do 32 to the three over five. Good. So it, you can do it either way. Doesn't matter which way you do it. Okay. Okay, and E is not too bad. It's really not bad, okay? So what I have up here is I have the same base and they're being multiplied together. Well, I know one of them's negative, but right now they're still being multiplied together. So what do I do with one-fourth and negative one-half? Good. So I'm going to say A, or actually, well, I'm not going to do that yet. So I'm going to say one-fourth plus negative one-half. I've just dealt with this numerator right here. <clears throat> then I'm dividing by two-thirds. So what do I need to do with two-thirds? Because I'm dividing. Subtract. And is subtracting two-thirds the same thing as adding negative two-thirds? Yes, it is. Okay, so now I need an LCD. Good. My LCD is 12. Okay, I've got a negative here and a negative here. 4 goes into 12 how many times? 3. 3 times 1 is 3. 2 goes into 12 how many times? 6 times negative 1. Okay. 3 goes into 12 how many times? 4 times negative 2. Good. Negative 8. Okay. Um, so then I've got 12. 3 plus negative 6 plus negative 8. Good, negative 11. So this is A to the negative 11 over 12. And where are we going to put that? Where does the A go? Yep, denominator. Okay, because of the negative. Because of this negative right here. That's why it goes in the denominator. So that is my final answer right there. Okay. Okay. Can I go to the next screen? Okay. Use rational exponents to simplify. So what I want to do here is I want to rewrite as a rational exponent. Okay, rewrite as a rational exponent. Okay, so the eighth root of x to the fourth, x is my base, the number on the inside is my numerator, okay? So x to the fourth, and then what's the denominator of my rational exponent? Good. Can four over eight be simplified? Yes. yes. What does it simplify to? Good. And then if I wanted to rewrite this as a radical, what is, how do I rewrite x to the one-half as a radical? Square root of x, good. Because this is an assumed one, we don't have to write that, and this is an assumed two, we don't have to write it. Knowing that the um, rational exponent of one half is the same thing as square root is something that you wanna be sure that you do, okay? Now, this one requires a little bit more thinking. This one does. 
Um, for this one, I've got 25 to the 1 6th power, okay? Because I've got a 1 right here, and then I'm taking the 6th root of that. But could I rewrite 25? 25 is a perfect square. So could I rewrite that as a perfect square? What is 25? 5 what? Good. Okay, so can, is 25 and 5 squared the same thing? Yes. And then I take that to the 1 6. Okay. A power to a power, what do we do? Good. So then I have 5 to the 2 6. Okay. So 2 6 simplifies to what? 1 third, okay, and so then this is going to be the same thing as the cubed root of five. These go much, much faster than our rationals. Much, much faster than rationals. Okay. Last topic for today. Okay. Um, Here, we've got radicals or roots that are different, okay? So I can't just rewrite these because this is a square root and this is a fourth root. So I can't just multiply those together because they're different, okay? It's not the same. They're not equal, okay? But what I can do is rewrite this as a rational exponent. So how do I rewrite the square root of x as a rational exponent? x to the what? Good, x to the 1 half. Now, can I also rewrite the fourth root of x as a rational exponent? Excellent, x to the 1 fourth. Now, what do I do with this 1 half and 1 fourth? What do I do? Add them together. Good. Okay, so then I have one half plus one fourth. Okay, so that's going to be two over four plus one fourth. Okay, so then I've got equals x to the three over four. Now it wants me to write it as a radical. So I need to rewrite x to the three. 3 fourths as one radical. So inside the radical, what is the power that x is being raised to? What's my numerator in that rational exponent? Three. Three. And what's my denominator? Fourth. Good. So this right here is my final answer. Okay, this one is interesting because they are not the same base. They are not the same base. Okay. So, let's go ahead and rewrite this right here. Five to the, the cubed root of five. How do I write that as a rational exponent? Five to the one third. Okay. Then how do I rewrite the square root of two? Good. Now, these are being multiplied together, but they are not the same base. Not the same base. Okay? Not the same base. So I can't just add the exponent, or I can't just add the exponents together because they're not the same base. What I can do is I can rewrite using the same denominator okay so that's what I'm going to do rewrite using the same denominator so I need to know sorry ran out of room what 
is a common denominator between three and two. What's a common denominator between three and two? Six. Okay. So I'm going to have one third equals something over six. Okay. Three goes into six how many times? Two. Two times one is two. So is one third and two sixths the same thing? Yes. So now I'm going to have five to the two sixths. Okay. Then I've got two to the one half. So one half equals something over six. Two goes into six how many times? Three, Three times one is? Okay. So then I have two to the three sixths. Now, do you see how now I've got the same denominator? Okay. Now I'm going to keep my five squared and I'm going to keep my two to the third. So I'm going to keep those numerators, but I'm going to pull the six out. So can I write this as five squared times two to the third and then have this raised to the sixth power? Is that the same thing? It, it is, it is, okay? I'm kind of doing the opposite of one of our exponent rules, okay? Now that I've got this one-sixth on the outside, is it okay to multiply these? Mm -hmm. So I've got five squared, which is 25, and two to the third, which is eight. So I've got 25 times eight. What's 25 times eight? Good. Okay, and now I can rewrite the one six. So my two hundred is going to stay in the inside, and then I've got the sixth root of two hundred. That one is more challenging, so you want to think through it. You want to think through that one. Okay.